Well, good morning again. I'm so glad that you've joined us for worship. It is great to praise our God. Amen? Amen. It, he is a, he's a wonderful, he's a powerful, he's all-knowing, he's all-loving. It is an honor and a privilege and a joy and it's such a beautiful thing to be in this place and to know that truth. We as Christians are people who do believe in that truth, right? We rejoice in our God. We seek after him. We are so thankful that he is all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-loving. That is why we gather. That is why we are here, because we believe in God. We believe in this God given to us in scriptures. It shapes what we do and how we act and how we see the world, how we interact with the people in it. It informs our daily lives. It's the anchor that weighs our purpose. That is what we believe. Amen? Amen. And so when we think about these things and we talk about these things, it's important to realize that it goes beyond just this moment, this moment of praise. But, you know... If you will indulge me, I'd like to just digress and confess real quick. Is that okay? Can I digress and confess? All right. Good. Um, I've got two show and tell objects for you today. I've got my keys and I've got my wallet. Now, the fact that I have both of these right now, right here, is a miracle. <laughs> because very often, one of these has disappeared from existence. I lose things all the time. And uh, the, the worst part about it is, is I live in a townhome, which if you don't know, is a three-story building, very skinny with lots of stairs. So I, I don't have to work out in the morning. I just have to get up and uh, go downstairs. And I've done my workout. Uh, the problem comes when I do go downstairs uh, and, uh, and I'm on my way out the door and I do my quick pat and realize that I don't have one of these objects. I look to the counter in which they should be and realize that they are not there. And then begins the three-story search for one of these things. Um, and after you've gotten ready for the day and you're wearing your suit and your tie and you're flying up three flights of stairs, let's just conf I'll just confess that I'm not the most Christian person in that moment, right? <laughs> right, but I lose things all the time, and I actually just got, uh, I, I know this about myself now, I just got back uh, from a trip uh, with a friend of mine who uh, looked at me a little crazy. Anytime I leave a hotel or I leave a place that I'm staying, I do what's called, I could just call it room check, right? And so I have all my backpack, it's right next to the door, and what I do is I just go through every part of the room I can. I duck, I get, I, I do this. I swear, I lift up the mattress and I look under the bed just to make sure that I hadn't kicked my wallet underneath there, right? Uh, and, uh, and I'm doing this as I'm leaving, right, for, uh, and coming back. And, and I'm doing this very thorough check and my friend's just standing at the door saying like, our, our Uber's here, like, can you stop, please? We got, you have it all, let's go. Um, and the, but the reason I do this is because from a very early age, like I won, I lost a lot of things. Uh, and two, I used to get really upset about it. Uh, and uh, my, my mom and dad, they, they, um, they were kind of tired of when we would go on vacations, me leaving my favorite toy in the room, right? And so they taught me room check. This has been since I was just a little kid. I would check the bed. I would check behind the chairs. I would open the drawers that we literally never opened the whole time we were there, just in case. Uh, but I would, my dad would calmly walk with me as we, he, we did it together, right? We would do this room chick together. Uh, and I've, I deeply value that uh, because, um, you know, the one thing about me that hasn't changed is that I still lose things. Uh, but I have something in my life that can help me um, at least just have a little bit more peace as I go throughout it. Uh, and so when I think about what it means to be a Christian, to believe in this all-knowing, all-powerful, all-loving God and allow that 
to affect my life, the question is, is how do I actually invite that into my life? That's the question, because I don't know about you, but very often I find myself distracted. I tend to lose those lessons that God might have taught me earlier in the week. I have a hard time allowing, as crazy it sounds, the whole purpose in which I've dedicated my life to actually guide my life. Am I alone in this? So the question is, is how? How do we let this God, this loving, compassionate, caring God, guide our lives? And the answer is prayer, right? We're in our prayer series. It's about seeking God's face. It's about asking the Holy Spirit, going to his scripture, going to him in prayer, and asking, what is it that you are calling me to do? Not just here, not just in this space, in this room. This is a place in which we encourage and inspire and lift each other up. But the real work begins when we walk out these doors. It's about seeking his face throughout the day. As I mentioned before, I used to get really frustrated when I lost things. And I think that life can do many of the same things. We beat ourselves up because we have read the scriptures, we have learned lessons, some of us for many, many years, some of us maybe just recently, but when we learn these things, we tend to lose them, right? And we get frustrated, we get upset, we get angry because we should have known better. We should have known better. We give in to guilt and shame because we have failed our God, right? We've lost some of the things that he's taught us. I want to encourage you today, if what's holding you back from praying and seeking God every day if it is shame and it is guilt, that is not from God. He does not call us to be people who self-wound and self-hate. God's message is that we are loved. In spite of our failures, we are loved. And so if the only thing you hear from me today is that um, what, if what's keeping you from going further with God has anything to do with guilt and shame, know that that, that is not what God desires for you. Um, you are loved and gifted, and there is plenty of scriptures that I can point you to to tell you that that is true. But the task is to be diligent, right? The task is to be disciplined. We say discipline in the church because what we mean is we mean practices, things that we do every day to seek God's face, to seek his will, to turn our hearts to him. And so the question is then, how? Where do I start? I remember I used to, I was walking on the beach as I was about, I think eight years old. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of guessing on this, but old enough to remember and young enough to this be a life crisis. We were walking on the beach, and I really enjoyed flip-flops. Does anyone have a love of flip-flops? I got one. Yeah, we got a couple here. Amen. All right. Uh, I love my flip-flops. You just slip them on. There's no effort. You know, people kind of know it. They go clop, clop, clop. You know, it's just, it's just convenient and fun. <laughs> Uh, but I, I had this pair of bonefish flip-flops. I loved my bonefish flip-flops. They were the best, the coolest. No one had cooler flip-flops than me. They were the best. And so one night we're walking on the beach, and it's just as, as a family. We're kind of walking along, and I'm walking in the water, and, and all of a sudden a, a kind of a bigger wave comes up, and I guess it had just uh, kicked at the right angle that I found myself in possession of only one flip-flop. 
And in that moment, I remember my eyes darted everywhere. My, ma- my brain began to spin. All the thoughts the, the, in my mind, I could see my flip-flops so clearly, so lonely, drifting into the ocean. It was right in front of me, but it was just like mist. I couldn't grasp it. And terror struck me, right? It was this awful moment of loss. Nothing worse in this world could have ever happened to me in that moment as an eight-year-old boy who lost his favorite flip-flop. <laughs> and I remember just being filled. I just, I, I, in, in defeat, I walked to the shore. I sat down. And in true mature fashion, I pouted and threw a tantrum. And my parents, in all their love and in the ridiculousness of the situation, came and they sat beside me. They comforted me. They said words of encouragement. And they said something that they had said many times before. Why don't you just pray? Why don't you just pray about your (laughs) flip-flop? It's ridiculous. (laughs) Right? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So we sit there. I say a little prayer, and then we go along our walk, me with my lonely flip-flop, remembering the, the life that was. And we go along our walk, and, and, uh, and we're on our way back. And I remember this as clear as day. We're walking back to our hotel, and a wave hits the shore. And on that wave as was a gift from God. (laughs) It was my flip-flop. It had been washed back on shore. And I cannot express to you the joy and the urgency in which I ran towards that flip-flop and grabbed it. No greater gift had ever been given to me than the return of my flip-flop. And my family celebrated, my parents celebrated, and we joyously, triumphantly walked back to my hotel. The night was saved, the vacation was saved, everything was right in the world, and God was good. (laughs) Amen? Amen. (laughs) It's a ridiculous story, but it's a true one. And the fact is that this is, there have been many other small ridiculous moments in my childhood where my parents would just say, why don't you pray? They sat by my side, and not every time was the item returned or such a joyous, triumphant uh, moment celebrated at the end of the night after that prayer. But what they did in my life, just as they did with uh, my bad habits in the room check, is they taught me a powerful lesson that even in the small things of life, in every little moment, God is there, he's listening, and you can seek his face. And in that practice, and in what I didn't realize that they were doing was instilling a discipline in me to equip me for adulthood. Not, it was something far bigger than what was in front of me. They knew, right? They knew that the flip-flop was really no big deal. But what they were focused on was teaching me something deeper, something bigger, something more powerful. And it's a lesson that I'll never forget and always cherish. Because the truth is God does the same with us. When we forget these little lessons, when we may have forgotten the word that he had given us, maybe even just that morning, there he knows and has something bigger and deeper for us. He wants to walk with us. He wants to sit with us in the little things of life, continuing to teach us these lessons and showing us more of who he is and what he's called us to be. As we seek his face in the little crises and the little joys and the little moments, sometimes the mundane, he is there. And it is in those moments that we are reminded of what he's taught us before. And sometimes we find something special and new. 
you know, it's so interesting how many times I do these room checks that I find other people's lost possessions. <laughs> Someone else's wallet. Uh, and I think to myself, well, this is a nice find. And if it's valuable, you know, I'll drop it off the desk. And lots of times it's just trash. But, right, sometimes even if we are relearning the same lessons, we find new and fun, interesting, life-giving things just in the little daily checks with God, just in the little moments of seeking his face. And so if we add, right, this, this idea of discipline, of, of routine, and we add, add this idea of guidance and small victories, what we find is the frustrations of life seem to be a little less. I am now, as my parents were, the most effective detective in the house. I can find things that are lost. Because in those moments, I say a little prayer. And I let go of the anxiety and the loss. And I just focus on just doing what I can. Going down the list, doing those little things. And the same is we, when we do this in prayer, when we seek God, his face, in just the little moments of life, what we find is a, a life focused on what matters, right? When crisis is hit, most of us turn to God, at least in this room, right? I remember watching, just recently I saw, a, 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 I was watching just, it was a late night thing and it was, it was just kind of a monologue after what had happened after 9-11 and, and an even bigger crisis is we as a nation tend to turn. Maybe sometimes we don't know what to call that being, but a greater being, right? And we in this church know who that is. But in crises, we tend to turn back to God. That doesn't seem to be too much of a problem for us. But so many times I find myself being overwhelmed by the small things. It's just the little moments, I lost my car keys, I forgot to fill up my tank of gas, traffic was a little worse, my day's just completely ruined. Right, someone did a little quib to me. But when we seek God in these little things, and if we just go to him when we forgot to fill up our tank, or we go to him when someone says just something a little bit too snarky to us that day, and we go to him, what we find is, is we, we are tuning in to what really matters and what God has called us to be. We're reminding ourselves that we are deeply loved. We are reminding ourselves that there is a bigger plan that is happening, that there is an all-powerful, all-knowing God, that rooted thing, that thing that we are all here that we believe. When we go to him in every little moment, we are reminded of us, and it keeps us focused on what matters, loving God and loving others. And we tend to throw away all those little things that develop unnecessary panic in our lives, unnecessary life-melting frustrations that really ultimately don't matter. In that, in seeking his face in the small moments, in the little moments, we're shown a life of peace, a life of comfort. God and Jesus remind us that not only do we share in the mission and sometimes the suffering that comes with that mission, we also share in God's loving, comforting presence. That God is always there. That he is in control. That he does love us. That he loves the people around us. That our lives might be a blip in the grand scheme of history, but that our great, all-powerful God, who is enacting something bigger than we can ever imagine, also deeply cares about us and our lives. He is a God of the micro plan and the, mi the, the micro and the macro, the big and the little, and everything in between. When we seek his face in those moments, we are reminded of the purpose in which we live our lives. God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-loving. He loves us, and he loves the world around us, and everything's going to be okay. Would you join me in prayer?
God, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for the ways in which you are working in this world in bigger ways than we can ever imagine. God, we confess that sometimes we lose the lessons that you've taught us. Lord, that sometimes we get overwhelmed God, by the little things in life and the frustrations that come with it. God, we pray that this week that you would use your Holy Spirit in a powerful way. Lord, that you would help us practice more the discipline of prayer in every little moment. Lord, that we might seek your face and experience the rejoicing that we have read about in your scripture. Lord, that we might rest knowing that you are our strength, our rock, our guide, our loving Father. God, we give all of these things to you. We're so thankful for a place like this where we can remind ourselves of your love. God, as we gather together, as we continue to worship, Lord, we lift our voices to you, praying the prayer that you taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We want you to know no matter where you are or how you worship with us, you are always part of our church family. We would love to have you join us live downtown at 845 or 11 o'clock, or as always, through the broadcast. We would love to hear from you. If you have a question about today's service, if you would like to contact one of our pastors, if we can pray for you in any way, please reach out to us through our church website. Thanks for worshiping with us today. It was great to have you with us.